three or four, we're in a timeless vortex of just truth and learning now. So I really appreciate you coming. It's, um, it's an honour for me, really, to um, introduce the next speaker. He's a, a, I class him as a friend and we've spent a lot of time together over the last few weeks. As I said, it, uh, it bears repeating. Um, Several months ago we had Skype chats and then uh, three or four weeks ago you got on a plane and left it, uh, Santos left his family and the dog and uh, came to England and Italy and he's been to Hull. And... Oh yeah! <laughs> that wasn't listed like that from you know, like, any reason, it was just a rational sort of working day. But uh, as I said, he's toured all over the country, he's been on trains and on people's settees. And uh, as I said, I'm honoured he's put so much trust and faith in us and, as I said, um, obliged us with uh, four weeks out of his life, really. And he, yes, he's wasting away, and yes, our food isn't brilliant, and yes, we've probably kept him up too late. And uh, the last two nights, he's probably going, they said, looks like camping. <laughs> And you still have to walk to the toilets, but as I said, I'm, I'm on a, I'm not even going to introduce the subject. Santos Benazzi is astrotheology, and the syncretism is really a new way of addressing all our thought processes. And it follows on from the meme of yesterday with John Lennon and um, uh, Schauberger, and through what Dave was on about this morning, and even Gary Bilkin and onwards. That um, you know, know thyself. And we help to uh, change the world, you know, change, change, be the change you want to see, and all that sort of stuff. Start from knowing who you are. So uh, I'm going to introduce him. Uh, it's going to be a long session. So grab your pens and relax back into the seats. This is Santos Benashi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely. I see some uh, old uh, faces. People that have been to some of the. Uh, other presentations and new faces and uh, here we are at Stonehenge so uh, well nice it's beautiful uh, very lucky I had a tour of um, the stones with Maria Wheatley and Busty Taylor and they took me around I'm going to talk about that in a minute it was beautiful of course Maria is now doing a little tour while I'm speaking Right. And um, so that was a privilege and an honour. I'm going to have a little bit of a chat about that. I want to spend 20 minutes talking about the tour thus far and the eight presentations which I've already done. Um, and today you're going to get a special presentation based on the sun. Special in that it hasn't been presented before. So I'm trying to keep the presentations fresh. Uh, thus far there has been no re repeats and I have a few more uh, presentations to to do as yet. Uh, for instance, uh, I'll be doing a special sovereignty slash self-determination presentation when I get to Northern Ireland in early September. But today's subject um, is the sun. So after 20 or 30 minutes of talking about the tour thus far, we're going to put the sun into perspective. And we're going to see what everyone and anyone has ever said about the sun. And so um, this uh, beautiful shining orb of light that gives us vitality is um, going to put it, be put into perspective. So the tour thus far. Uh, <laughs> first talk I gave was uh, at St Anne's and there I presented uh, the science behind the science. So we talked a little bit about light. Because that's all there is to talk about after all. <laughs> it's all light. So we spoke about that and we spoke about uh, the magnetic light. The causal magnetic light. And uh, differentiated it from the electrical light of effects duality, positive and negative. And that was uh, a presentation in which I featured a bit of the uh, documentary Primer Fields by David Lapointe. And I think he did a really good job of explaining from a reverse engineering perspective really 
how the universe pretty much how it works. Uh, and from the laboratory, laboratory point of view, so using what Walter Russell would call sense thinking. He's done a pretty good job and I highlighted some of that uh, documentary, recommend to watch it. Uh, and we spoke a lot about uh, Russellian science as well. And that was one presentation. Then we came to, I need some light here, Birmingham. And the first presentation there was the nursery rhymes. So that should be up on uh, YouTube soon. One has already been put up by our brother here. Sorry. Uh, Torbs. 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 Yeah. Torbs. Thanks, Torbs. Uh, last night, Torbs put up the Glastonbury Zodiac, which, is, which was the eighth and the last one I did only a couple of days ago. So it's very quick. So this one should be up soon too. Okay. So look for the Stonehenge one. The Glastonbury one is up if you want to have a look at that. And that was quite interesting because I will speak about that in a minute and how a couple of the gentlemen, i.e. John Woodsworth, Wadsworth or Woodsworth, anyway, uh, I'll get that right in a minute, and uh, David, who wrote this book, were in the audience, and I'll have a chat about that in a minute, it's beautiful. But you'll see it already on YouTube. So, Birmingham, uh, nursery rhymes. And we showed how the nursery rhymes are all based on alchemy, Kabbalah, uh, mysticism, etc., etc., the science of life, syncretism. And those beautiful little rhymes that we repeat and we wonder, hmm, who would have concocted such beautiful wisdom? When were they conceived? And we get lost in the mists of time if we go back far enough. And the uh, answers to these questions are not satisfactory unless we understand that once upon a time everything was syncretic and unified in knowing, not divided in thinking. And so um, <coughs> nursery rhymes amongst all the other types of uh, songwriting, i.e. gospels, uh, tragedies, comedies, operas, whatever you may call them, uh, they all originate with uh, the science of light. And the orbs that follow the ecliptic, the ecliptic is the path, the brazen serpent of Moses in the wilderness, the wilderness is the zodiac. <coughs> the circuit of Galilee that Jesus walks on, Galilee is the circuit of the zodiac. Strong's concordance tells you that. <coughs> And so it's, it's, the nursery rhymes are on that ecliptic because it's all the science of light. And this is the theme of the tour, actually. Syncretism, the science of light. So then we went to Bristol. Beautiful. Gorgeous place. <laughs> Loved it. Uh, Bristol, and there we spoke about the, the ascension and the raising of the chrism. I have already presented this information in uh, YouTube presentations called Secret of Secrets, The Elixir of Life Within, and Your Body is the Holy Land. So I won't <coughs> elaborate too much on that because I want to get to the subject on ha at hand. That will be available. <coughs> so how to ascend. The ascension is within. One is a Jew within, not without. The Christ is within, Colossians 1.26. It's the chrism. In the Greek script, uh, system, Christos is the oil which is secreted from the claustrum. And that's the oil that descends and then ascends, and then we have illumination. Because, of course, when the prodigal son returns, when Ulysses returns to Penelope, is reinstated in his kingdom, and that oil, once it returns to the third ventricle, the third heaven, uh, it increases its vibration a thousand fold. Because the Sahasrara chakra is a thousand uh, petal uh, lotus. 
and uh, all the dormant brain cells are reactivated. And this is the process of ascension. It is within, and uh, we discussed this, and that will be up soon, hopefully. Uh, following that, Manchester, the Philosopher's Stone. And we spoke about the alchemical story along the ecliptic. When one commences in Capricorn, the cardinal earth sign, ruled by Saturn and lead, one starts on a journey, starting at the bottom, earth, cardinal earth, lead, and by the time one goes around, through the elements, in order, the twelve elements, or sorry, the four elements in there, three cardinal nodes, so cardinal fixed mutable, cardinal fixed mutable, you come to the eleventh sign, Leo, which is the gold. And then that's the fixed fire. The last and the twelfth sign is Sagittarius, ruled by Jupiter, Jupiter, Saint Peter, the pearly gates from which we ascend through the Tropic of Cancer, which is known as the Gateway of the Gods. And that's the Philosopher's Stone. And that's explained from the uh, Manchester um, Syncretism of Light presentation. Uh, <clears throat> then we went to Leicester and we did the Holy Days. And what we did was we simply followed the ecliptic. So there you have the Earth, the equator, the Tropic of Cancer. <clears throat> Tropic of Capricorn, and of course the ecliptic. And so, what we did was we commenced where right ascension of mer meridian begins in astronomy. Where the ran Aries begins in astrology, where Abraham begins in astrophy or theology, where Sarah Brum, which I have shown in my many presentations, Sarah's is Isis or Sarah. Brum is Abram. Cerebrum, Aries, ruled by Aries. Taurus is the cerebellum. Cerebrum is Sarah Abram. So you see you have astronomy, theology, <coughs> biochemistry, because this is the Ceres, this is the wax that we spoke about before, the oil which comes from the place of cereals. And this is, of course, March, April. And so, <clears throat> we begin here our journey. As I said before, with the Philosopher's Stone in Manchester, we began in Capricorn. It's the sheep and the goats. The goat rules the solstice, the solstitial axis. The sheep, the ram, rules what is known to be the ecclesiastical, spiritual axis. Fire and air. Libra is air. The intellectual nature, the spiritual nature. Fire is mystic. This is the masculine, equinoctial, spiritual plane of the cross, the holy cross. And this is the feminine, Capricorn, Cancer, water, earth, emotions, sensual, or body. And this is the kingly axis. Ptolemy, second century astrologer, said this is, this is noted for ecclesiastical... Uh, sorry, for... Is that me? I think so. Uh, this is... 
known for uh, as the, 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 the kingly uh, axis, you see. So we begin our journey here or here. The four Gospels, out of the four Gospels in what, the Bible, two Gospels begin here with a baby Jesus, 25th of uh, December in Capricorn. And Mark, Mark is March, or ran backwards, Mars, the ruler of Aries. Mark, Mark and John begin with the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Fully known Jesus, no legitimate sense. So this is the science of gospel writing. What's the gospel? I think I have to turn around for a better sense. There's too much fre uh, frequency feedback there. Uh, what's a gospel? Well, a gospel is a... Uh, two L's? No, one. Is a goat spell. So it comes from the word tragudi. Tragudia in Greek. Tragos is the goat. And udi is owed, owed to the goat. Which goat? Capricorn. <clears throat> and so we get the word tragedy. Uh, the Renaissance Italians would have called it Ogre. Is that hard to see, is it? That is better. Yeah, you'll have to put it out. More, I think, for better. Yeah. And so, uh, Dante called it a comedy. But the tragosudi, or the goat spell, gospel, um, is the, the science of talking about light along the ecliptic. And so when you, when you have this, this wave, and Walter Russell said the secret of creation is in the wave, he was referring to this wave of the positive and the negative, the vibration, the electrical light of illusion of the universe, which is the effect. And the cause is the magnetism, the Mother Mary. Pure. She's a virgin because it's pure white light. It's not red and blue, which is how Walter Russell explains this, and many other scientists. It's in, it's in theology and alchemy. Red is fire, blue is water. Red is masculine, positive. Blue is feminine, negative. Mary, maritime, water. Fire, Jesus, electric. Emmanuel, electricity. And so, there's the two lights, you see. There's always the two gods, the prime creator and then Jehovah, or Shiva, or Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, creator, operator, destroyer, carbon, fixed, mutable in astrology. And so, when you, when, you, when you see that wave, and you start here at Aries, you can start at Capricorn, but I've chosen to start that particular presentation of the holy days in Aries, your eyes shall be opened. And you will see that all theologies are based on this. Most of the, the, most of the memorative things that have ever occurred in the Bible have occurred in this sign, the sign of Nisan, Aries. Abraham sacrificed the ram in the thicket. Noah's Ark lands on Mount Ararat on Nisan 17. Jesus Christ resurrects and ascends on Nisan 17. Esther frees the Jews on Nisan 17. Jericho falls at the hand of Joshua, uh, <coughs> Nisan 17. The Jews eat uh, the first fruits, of course, the blossom of Aries, for, for, for the first time on Nisan 17. They descend down into Egypt for the first for the. 430 years of enslavement on Nisan 17. Moses parts the Red Sea and they walk through the Red Sea on Nisan 17. 
Hmm. All there. Easter happens there. In astrology, that's the exaltation of the sun. Hmm. I wonder why that would be. Would that have anything to do with the nights are longer here and the days are shorter? And then the moment the sun splits the middle on the 21st of March every year, then the days are longer and the nights are shorter. So therefore the sun exalts. And it's interesting that the sun is Horus and opposite that sign in Libra is Saturn. Set where sun sets every day, sun rises here, sun sets over here, and set, and set is the exalter of the sign of the wind. That's astrology. And so when you merge and cross the disciplines <coughs> with syncretism, you begin to understand what's really going on. Here is theology, here is astrology, here is astrotheology, nursery rhymes, alchemy, biochemistry, astronomy. And that's how Holy Scriptures are made. That's how Gospels are written. And anyway, just to, I'm spending a lot of time on this. I didn't really want to talk about the, the Manchester one so much, but this was, this was precious for me, this uh, particular one, because it opens your eyes. You begin to see then what Pentecost means over here, mid-May. You begin to see why the sun is transformed on the 6th of uh, August every year, of course. It, Jesus is transfigured on the mountain in the middle of Leo in summer where it's hot and the sun is transfigured. Uh, you come to here and the Jews celebrate Judgment Day over here. You understand why on the equinox. Here is the harvest moon, here is the hunting moon. You begin to see why, because you hunt in the winter, you harvest in Virgo. Then of course as you can, here is Yom Kippur, Rosh Hashanah. Rosh meaning the start, the head. And of course, this is the head, the start of the Jewish secular year. Here is the start of the Jewish sacred year. Nisan, Tishri. Aries, Libra, the spiritual axis. Of course, there's going to be tons and tons of religious festivities from all around the world in those beautiful signs. And of course, Capricorn. And many over here too. Many of which have to do with... Um, the crossing of the Milky Way galaxy in Cancer. For instance, the Japanese on the 7th of July every year celebrate Tanabata when the Milky Way at 12 o'clock is directly overhead and Orihime and Hikoboshi, Vega and Altair, the two lovers, fifth brightest star and the twelfth brightest star, and the Milky Way separates them. And then only on one day is that alignment. You see, so. <laughs> These four cardinal signs are filled with festivities. And you'll see about at least 70 or 80% of the religious festivities are along those, or the fixed, or the um, cross-quarter days. May Day, Life Mass Day, Halloween's, Groundhog's Day. And this is the eight-spoke wheel. And these are the portals of the sun. It is known that when the sun goes through these eight points, these nodes, you know, this will be like the north node of the moon, and this will be like the south node where judgment happens. And these are nodal points, and so, and, and they're portals. And it is known that on the two days of equilibrium, these candle, these are called candlesticks in theology. And these are the pillars of Hercules longest day, shortest day, equal days. And all science is based on this. Okay, I'll proceed. Whoops. Let me proceed with. Then we did um, gospel writing in Birmingham. Uh, there were a few from there. Here, uh, few, uh, were you there? No. Okay. no. okay, I saw a few faces today from there. Anyway, um, we did gospel writing based on <clears throat> this science and, and, and merging and syncretising all of the, uh, the sciences that are hidden in our Gospels. So that was good by the end of the day. That was a workshop and by the end of the day uh, everyone went home with the ingredients for the best songwriting that you could possibly conceive. Yeah, because everything starts in areas, in cardinal fire, fire, tetragrammaton, tetrahedron, 
always there has been that association. The tetragrammaton is the tetrahedron, the fire, the creator. Everything is caused through fire. Everything is generated through fire. The other signs destroy the work of fire. That's the earth. Um, so earth is stabilizing. Fire is generative. Earth is stabilizing. Air is corruptive and water is destructive. So therefore, this is why the tetrahedron, everything begins at that causal point here. And this is the start of the year, this is the start of the day. 6 a.m., March the 21st. And the body is in here, the human body. I won't go into that today, but the head is here. The cerebrum, Sarah Abram, is the land flowing with milk and honey because in Aries is the pineal gland and the pituitary gland. The pineal gland secretes the honey, the pituitary gland, Mary, the wife of Joseph, Joseph, the pineal gland, secretes the milk. And this is the land flowing. This is heaven. Heaven is head. Heaved up. Heel is hell. Head is heaven. So when we ascend the oil, we go to heaven. The ascension is within. <laughs> No guru without that's going to do it for you. And there's no vicarious salvation that will ever occur to do it for you. It's your work. You are the Jesus that needs to be restored to form a glory of unconditioned consciousness. And so here also, <clears throat> everything is here at the head when it comes to do with uh, theology. Right in those signs there. Taurus and Aries. And so, then we came to Glastonbury and uh, we did the Zodiac. And that's up. I'm, I won't speak about that anymore because that's up. And here we are and the subject is the sun. Before I proceed to that, uh, I wanted to talk about uh, this particular book. Avery, which was given to me yesterday by Maria Wheatley and Busty Taylor. Avery, Sun, Moon and Earth. And I was, uh, I wanted to just um, talk a little bit about the tour that I was given, just to share some gems with you. And another tour I had to York. There's more too, but I think I'll keep it simple. Uh, yeah, let's start with this one. I've got so much to share. Um, and everything's sort of contributing to, to what I've uncovered and, and what I'm doing. So I want to share a bit of that. Uh, first we went to Stonehenge. That was beautiful. And Mary shared, uh, Maria shared so much wisdom, uh, along with uh, Busty, of course, uh, about the, uh, the stones and how there are, there are myths that these stones move and are alive. And you can see it. You can feel it. So, and Maria was, was, was saying how sad it is that people can't be there with those stones responsibly. That they would be responsible, of course, uh, most uh, uh, if we uh, allow people to be themselves and live in honour um, and, you know, be close to those stones and get some real uh, spiritual enlightenment, enlightenment from them. Uh, some of those are of uh, sarsen. Is that right? Is that how you call it? Yeah. The hardest. It's it's second to diamond in hardness. Some of those stones. Anyway, that was beautiful. Then we went to uh, Avebury and had a tour there, and the insight uh, of the wisdom that uh, they shared with me was incredible. One in particular, at one point, was. When you sit in the devil's chair, one of those stones there, um, <clears throat> what you're supposed to be seeing is the sun setting at midwinter, at the solstice, or at solstice day rather. But they've extended the hill and yet they've blocked the view of that beautiful sight. And you can see the other solstice from that chair. And that's why the chair is facing there. And that's something I wouldn't have picked up if I had just been walking past and saying, hey, you know, these stones are so nice. So, you know, they've obviously got that uh, <coughs> knowledge in here. Then we went to uh, West Kennet Long Barrow and we did some drum work with um, 
Nick? No, no, no. He came along. <laughs> anyway, um, my apologies, I forget his name, but we did some drum work in those chambers. There's five chambers there. Anyone been there? Yeah. It was uh, very interesting. Wonderful experience. Uh, what else did we do? We went to Salisbury and we saw, I saw the Magna Carta. And where King John signed the Magna Carta, saw the Magna Carta. And my, my, isn't the uh, Salisbury Cathedral a marvel? I, I wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared for uh, the beauty of um, that cathedral. My best friend in, in Australia, a great friend of mine in Australia, Gary Tapper, his um, family comes from Salisbury and he's always uh, spoken about how beautiful it is. Of course, I've seen uh, pictures of it, but it's breathtaking. Uh, and it's also, uh, the spire is actually uh, leaning and they've restored it with flying buttresses and everything. And I've seen, you can, you, when you go inside, you can actually see the, um, the granite pillars um, bending and they're inclined a couple of degrees. It's very scary, but uh, they've restored it. Um, these cathedrals were monuments, orchestrations in architecture and masonry of um, just megalithic proportions. Men devoted themselves, men and women devoted themselves to making, uh, making light the subject of their adoration through temples, gospels, song. <laughs> Any love song is, is a song about light. Love is light. Sound is light. We are light. Uh, and it's a beautiful dance of light that we are experiencing. And here we are at Stonehenge. This is definitely one of the most uh, astounding monuments to light <clears throat> and Maria explained to me in her graph about the seven rings uh, the seven rings of, or the seven heavens from Saturn to the moon and the seven chakras etc she explained that this monument represents Saturn and immediately I looked at Stonehenge and I said, how many stones go around the ring? And she said, 30. That's the number of Saturn. And of course she uh, placed in her uh, graph, so Silbury Hill is Earth, and then we have, I wish I had brought that along actually, um, I would love to, I didn't expect to be explaining this, but. Uh, so we've got uh, Silbury Hill is Earth, and then Stonehenge with its 30 uh, perimeter stones is, is uh, Saturn. And then in the middle here is Marden. Marden. Don means hill, hill of Mars. Uh, Jupiter's ring is, um, it's all measured to sort of the proportions, proper proportions, and these monuments are actually showing the solar system here in uh, in the Avery uh, area. So I'll get back to that. I'll, uh, after the, perhaps tomorrow I'll, I'll, <coughs> I'll remember, I'll bring the, uh, the graph with me. Uh, just before I proceed, also the Glastonbury Grail uh, by the naughty gnome, David is his name, and he presented me this book too. And interesting that when I presented the Glastonbury Zodiac, Zodiac you'll see it on the um, presentation that both uh, John Wadsworth, I hope I haven't got that wrong, my apologies if I have, and David, both, uh, I asked them to come to the, uh, to the, the front and um, they spoke a little bit about their, their products. So that was real syn synchronous and um, yeah, that's the kind of universe we live in. Because as consciousness grows, we are aware of more. That's what consciousness is, knowing. Ignorance is the opposite. And so, these are the beautiful things that are happening. I, I find them beautiful. I find them just absolutely wonderful. To have, you know, David, uh, John uh, was, was uh, shocked. He actually put his hand up to correct something that I was saying in the presentation. He said, well, I actually re wrote the article that you're reading from. <laughs> because <laughs> I sourced it from the internet. There's three beautiful articles about Aries, Taurus and Pisces 
and how you find all these things in, Glaston in the Glastonbury Zodiac. For instance, Clark Shoes, biggest manufacturer of shoes in the Pisces side of High Street, and over the road you've got all the wool shops in the Aries. And that's just a snippet of the things that we spoke about. Yeah. And he was there and, and he was slightly embarrassed and so was I. But this is, this is the sort of stuff that's happening, you know. Uh, anyway, I just want to just add a little bit about York. Um, uh, Scott, are you here, Scott? Yeah, there he is. Yeah, Scott and Kirsty. Well, Scott um, took me to York. And uh, wow, wow. Uh, what we learned there, I went to the uh, York Minster, the largest in north of the Alps. And of course, Salisbury, which I saw two days ago, is the largest spire in England. And um, what a wealth of information Scott had to share, and I'm glad. And that was another synchronous thing, and I just see it as written in the script anyway. I'm just following along. Uh, I could spend hours and tell you some of the most amazing things that have happened since I landed at Rome on the 20th of July. It's been a, an amazing tour. And, uh, but this is some of the things that, that I learned. I always knew that York was interesting because you get New York, masters of the stock exchange from York in Yorkshire, and you get the York right. And this is uh, the big one, along with the Scottish right. And I learned this from uh, Leo Zagami, who is um, a relative of Queen Elizabeth. And he's speaking out about uh, yeah, the, the Masonic world and uh, Zionism and uh, the banks and the Vatican and all of these corrupt uh, entities. And he's speaking out. And he's a Bos Leon. Have I said that wrong? Queen Elizabeth is a Bos Leon. We know that, don't we? Bose. 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 I thought I said it wrong. Thank you. Bos Leon. Lion. Lion. Excuse me. Okay, so, and he's a relative, you see, he's bloodline, and he's speaking out. And um, you, you might want to see that interview of uh, Leo Zagami, because he exposes what York, how powerful York really is. And when you go outside the Minster and you see the statue of Constantine, and he's sitting on his couch on his divan like this, you know, with such an arrogant... Uh, and uh, the, the, the plaque there at the bottom says, Constantine enthroned himself as Emperor of Rome in York and then moved on down to Rome and initiated the corporate Ponzi scheme of um, the donation of Constantine and Peter's Pence and the corporation of the Vatican or the Catholic Church and um, taxes and in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, so the arrogance, you know, and you see, down the road from York Minster is the church where George Bush's Plantagenet relatives are buried in. And so this is a powerful lay, lay that these, um, these churches are built on, you see. And the York Minster has the head of this family. It's just telling you that the family still rules the show. They're still in possession from, from those times. And Constantine, of course, was, um, wow, some sort of a character. And, of course, you have uh, Helen there, St. Helen Square in York, in the town. And it's interesting how you have a lot of associations. Scott pointed out that York backwards is Croy, or Troy. And, of course, you had the two, um, you had the uh, Brigantes and you had the Parises, pa Rizzi, Paris. You've got St. Helens Square, you've got Constantine, who is just another replica of, uh, of um, uh, you know, the conquering, uh, you know, who was it, uh, Achilles, I guess, or whoever, it's, it's always the same one archetype, one hero. But you see this, you, you see, and Scott, you could probably add a few more of the analogies that, we, that you spoke about there. What else? I mean, it's all the same thing. The heart... There's the heart in the middle of the two rivers, the Foss and the Ooze. Ooze. Yeah, Foss is light, Ooze is gold, light and gold. And they meet in the heart, and there's the minster in there. It's the shape of a heart. 
And so the York Rite is here. This is a powerful, powerful centre. Just as, just as Glastonbury and, and Avebury and all of this area is, is there's two centres. And here we have the Constantine Plantagenets and you've got, well, remember the War of the Roses and all of that history, that's still all there. And next to here you see King Henry VIII destroyed the Abbey and that's still standing. Um, this is, this is, there's a lot to be learned about this city, folks, in, um, in the whole scheme of things. So that was very, very enlightening. Uh, now, to the subject at hand. All the forms that we see, the seeds are planted in the seed of, in the heart of the sun, in the centre of the sun, and this that we, everything we see is emanating from there, the causal light from the centre of the sun. Eric Dollard, <coughs> you can see his um, videos on YouTube. Eric Dollard explains, he studied the sun most of his life, and he explains out of the back of his car in Arizona in the desert in his interview how the sun is empty. It's cold. There's no fusion going on in the core of the sun. It's empty. Sunspots reveal that the sun is empty inside. There's only the, the, um, the outside skin. And arcing and fusion only occurs in the uh, the corona of the sun in the outside of the sun, not in the core of the sun. There's no fusion, and it is a converter. He calls it a converter or a <coughs> transformer, and it transforms, in the words of Eric Dollard, transform, transforms primary force into secondary force. I would like to just change one of those words if I could, and I would say in harmony with Walter Russell's beautiful teachings. <coughs> if I could correct someone with the great knowledge, a physicist, and a great genius like <coughs> Eric Dollard, which I'm not attempting to correct him, but it's obvious to me that what he's saying is the sun is a converter from prime, he says force, I would say power, that's just what I would say, into secondary. Force. Walter Russell would say there is only one force that God uses. God, I, God would be conscious, white, causal, undivided, still, all-knowing light, where omniscience, omnipresence, omnipotence, and immortality exist. Where we exist in the Imperium, our true nature. And so Yes, the sun is a converter. You see, he explains that you cannot see the sun in, in, in outer space, in free space. You can, we cannot see the sun. Um, so we need a, a body, a mass, like the earth and the atmosphere, you see? And so then we can see the sun. So he really says there's no light and there's no travelling of light. And see, in stars, he says the light that we see from stars could be just seconds old, not necessarily millions could be seconds old. And remember, of course, we remember the words of, who was it that said, uh, was it Nietzsche that said, as long as we continue to perceive, conceive of the stars outside of us. We won't see the ones within, we we'll understand. We won't see the ones within. Yeah, the words to those effect. Yes. It's Nietzsche, was it Nietzsche? I'm just getting confused here a little bit, but anyway. Um, because, because what is without is within. And they knew that, as above, so below. The law of correspondence, the hermetic law, one of the seven laws. What is in the macrocosm is in the microcosm, you see. And so that's what it does, it converts. And of course, when the sun, because it's not uh, visible in outer space, in free space, when it hits the Earth's atmosphere, this is when the transformation begins. It transforms here at this level, you see, into a third, a third thing. And how you would explain this in theology is the Father, the Son, uh, no, sorry, uh, <coughs> the Father, the causal light, the Son, which has now manifested dualistic light, positive and negative ions, or positive and negative um, 
positively and negatively charged ions are coming from the sun. So it's positive and negative. Okay? It's, it's vibrating. It's vibratory light, therefore it's dualistic. It's secondary light. It's force. Walter Russell says God uses only, there's only one force that God uses to create everything that is visible in the universe. And that is electricity. And God is a magnetism. You see? So here you see the magnetism at the cause of the sun, where everything must return. Everything is born from here, according to Walter Russell. Everything must be returned through that portal, back to cause. And so this electric light is secondary force. And that force, when it hits here, this is the Holy Spirit stage. This is theology. The Father is the unnamed. The Son is the S-U-N slash S-O-N. Because it's electric, L. And the virgin shall give a child, and his name will be Emmanuel. And then this is the Holy Spirit. This is explained by many um, astrological, biblical astrologers. The Reverend Tom Thomas Ta Taylor in 1830 explained that. That this is the Holy Spirit. He was from Birmingham. And because we breathe in here. This is the womb. This is earth. This is mother. This is father. Matter, material, M, L. So here you have, you know, um, the positive forces of nature here expressed, here you have negative. But this is our home, the womb, which we, one day we, you know, experience apothe apotheosis as, as a grub becomes a butterfly, and this is called metamorphosis. We have apotheosis. <coughs> Apo, from. The Italian genius, uh, Pier Luigi Igina, uh, he said that in the center of the sun is a heart that beats at the same rate as our heart. You can see him speaking about this uh, on YouTube. Pier Luigi Igina. Igina is spelled I G H. I N R I N A, and um, it's worth listening to him. He spent ten years with Marconi, and then after that, he studied the sun for thirty years. He has a um, seismic. Um, he invented a, a machine which penetrates the the crust of the Earth, and it's like a valve, and it releases the gas from the crust of the earth, and hence he has prevented earthquakes. It's anti-seismic um, machine. You can see that on YouTube too. He modifies the weather. He, he does an experiment on YouTube, and he, and he, and he manifests the clouds. You can see it. And then the clouds go away. And this old little old gentleman, Pierre, Pierre Luigi, died about 15 years ago. Uh, he explains that he studied the sun for 30 years. And he said that the sun emits uh, what he calls positive atom. It's, it's, or is it negative? No, no, it's, yeah, it's positive, okay. When it hits the atmosphere, and he said the earth emanates a closing energy, negative, and the sun is emanating an expanding energy. And from the center of the sun is a heart which is beating at the same rate of ours, which would be 72 beats a minute. On average. And so, so we see we have the hollow sun. We have a sun which at its centre has a zero point of magnetic light. It's its own central sun. Of course, all the mythologies talk about the sun behind the sun behind the sun. There's always a physical one that you see, a psychic one. Uh, and a, a spiritual. <coughs> That's why Mithras is always seen as two. <coughs> because they, they keep it simple, it's a spiritual and physical sun. It's always known that the, the ancients didn't just worship an, an orb that they thought was inanimate. You know, They worship light. God is light, the scriptures tell you. And so they looked at these 
beautiful orbs as secondary Im uh, images, if you like, that represent the beautiful magnetic light, which is who we really are. And hence Jesus says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Because the Father is in reference to the still light. Because if you've seen vibrating light, well, you, you, you know that that's the thinking light which comes from the knowing light, of course. And so let us proceed and see if we can uh, follow the sun along the ecliptic. There's the ecliptic. This particular map shows the ecliptic uh, starting over here and it put Aries in here. Can we get a bit of focus on that? I suppose we can. Right, so, and, and that's probably more natural than the maps that I use. I usually tend to, to get the ones that start from here because in masonry and in theology and in astrology, everything starts from this side, although our Earth spins anti-clockwise, right, and not clockwise. So really, if it's spinning anti-clockwise, then everything should flow that way. <laughs> so it should start from here. Um, but what I'll do is, as I usually do in the presentations, just go over to um, the other one because you see these are a couple of maps that are starting from here. You can see that the, north, the climb up to the Tropic of Cancer is always on this side. And uh, <clears throat> there's a reason for that which I won't go into um, today because I, I want to just spend time on, on the sun. and. and and looking at, looking at the symbol of the wave, the cross, which is based on these cardinal points. You see? So if you bring that around to around here, you have a cross. You have the equinoctial cross and you have the solstitial. And that's, that's the key. The cross is the key. The secret of creation is the wave. And the wave is expressed by the cross. The most holy. Look, we're all carrying them. I've got a couple. <laughs> I've got an Ecuadorian one, and I've got a Celtic cross. And you'll be carrying it in one form or another. Your body's one. We're always carrying the cross of the four elements, the four rivers of the Garden of Eden. Nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, and carbon. And carbon is the earth one, which is, corresponds to carbon's number is 666. We're all carbon crystals. Christ's. All animated forms have carbon. And these are the four rivers. There's almost four of everything. Four underpinning everything. Theology, astrology, the lot of it, because it comes from this four. And how light acts. It has four polarities, says Walter Russell. Okay, but um, if we start here, we've got Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer. So this is the start of the year, this is the start of the day, we have the eastern point here, the sun always sets in Libra, there's the scales right at the middle, there's where Libra starts, 30 degrees along the ecliptic, here is Scorpio, Sagittarius, and there we have Capricorn begins in the middle, and the longest, shortest day of the year in winter, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces the fish, and then the sun comes out of the waters, Pisces, and he's born in fire, air is the land. In every cycle, in every fractal, from cluster gal galaxy, galaxies to subatomic. That's it. That's what light does. And the, the ancients knew this. And we are remembering this. I mean, the, this, this, is not, this is not new, new science. This is old. This is so an ancient. And astrology is too. It's, it's perennial. It just is. It's the science of life. You see. And so based on this, <coughs> We see that mm, I'm going to have a problem here, aren't I? Well, I better get over here. Uh, based on this, we have the cross. The oldest religion on earth is the worship of the sun on the cross. And this is how the cross is formed. You see the solstices and the equinoxes. And there's the symbol. And you'll see it. I mean, this is not. The great thinkers will tell you that this is um, caveman evolving along the Darwinian lines 
and then all of a sudden waking up to art and, and stimulating his brain and then is becoming an artistic creature. This is, <coughs> this is a very rustic pagan, pagan means country bumpkins, not refined, doesn't have to be. There's two styles. There's always the pagan rustic and there's always the cultured style of the esoteric. Exoteric, esoteric. This is very exoteric. And, and this, is, this is how, but it's also esoteric. <laughs> but this is how, when we awaken to what already is, no, no caveman just said, oh yes, well the way, if I see, yes, I'm thinking now, mm -hmm. must be expressed like that, you know, uh, or whatever. We, we remember this science. You can't invent it. There's nothing new on the sun. You see, so this would be ex explained by uh, re we remembering who we are. The astrologers say when we return to the science, the mother of all science is astrology. When we return to it, uh, it is because we have uh, awakened and remembered who we are and we look to the stars and remember this is where we came from, you see. And because that's why humans can look up. Animals don't contemplate stars. Not even the smart ones like, well, they may. We don't see them contemplating them. It appears that they don't. But we certainly do contemplate and wonder, you know. It's got to be more, etc. So this is what we're doing. We are remembering this. And here are the most ancient of all glyphs which are revealing the wave. This is all based on the wave. Light. Vibrating light. Universal mind thinking. Every culture. That's the secret of creation. The wave. Here is a very elaborate... Uh, I think we, this one turns up in a bigger slide in this presentation, but this is in um, the temple in India to the sun. The eight-spoke wheel. This is... A, fine carved stone. This is like very hard stone carved in India, polished in the Temple of the Sun. There's about 24 of these wheels all around, or 12 of these wheels around the temple. The temple of um, Konark. Karnak in Egypt, Konark in India, and Karnak in France. <laughs> because it's all about Aries, the head. Karnak. The head. <clears throat> that, that, that particular name. There's many different styles of swastikas. Swaz means Shiva. This is the symbol of Shiva, the destroyer. Depending on which way his um, arms are pointed. But you have them all over the world. It's, it's the wave. The secret of creation is in the wave. The, same, the ancients knew this. And they were leaving behind um, something that they knew would be misunderstood with the, the dropping of consciousness that we have experienced in the last Piscean age, the Iron Age. We, we have, we, I mean, there have been inquisitions and, and people have killed other people because they don't have the same religion. Continents have been conquered in the name of Christ, in the name of Islam, African countries. Um, of course, this is not the true... Islam or the true Christianity that is the science that was always was. These are fascist uh, corporate um, takeovers, Ponzi schemes called monotheism. Beware of the, the MONs, people. Beware of uh, the MONs. Eh? Monarchy, money, and then money, and then monopolies, and then monotheism. Theism, of course, they are. Theists, not deists. These guys invent, this comes from their subjective thinking, their theist, theism, and their monotheism. has nothing to do with deism and God and this. <laughs> Later the cross became more prevalent in some cultures, but the wheel is still evident. There it is. This is the cross that I'm having, that I have on my... Uh, Someone gifted, gifted it to me from Ireland. There they are. It's always been there. The Egyptians knew of this. The Assyrians. 
early Christian crosses. There's the Roman cross. It's all the way. There's Jesus on the cross. Jesus comes from I-E-S. Yes. Yes. The Son. Jesus. Positive. Affirmative. Jesus is the Son. He is always depicted as the Son. Churches are doing it without even knowing. When I was a Jehovah's Witness for 20 years, I pulled out a watchtower and I still keep that one. It's at home. But, and it's the, you open up to the middle and it's the study article and it says, Jehovah God is mighty in power. And there's a Son right behind Jehovah. The Son. You, you, don't, you don't think the... Uh, the governing body of Jehovah's Witness doesn't know that the true, the true Christianity is just the science of light. No, they know. But they've got to keep it subtle. You see, these, these churches, their governing bodies, they know that Beth El, El is electricity. Beth is the home. Home of the sun. 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 These are all Christian churches. All of them. These people will kill you if you don't believe their corporate version. These will they'll kill you, they'll kill you, they'll kill you, they'll kill you. And guarantee you'll find some nasty members of the governing bodies of these churches. And their interest is not looking after you. They are wolves in sheep's coverings. And they do this to rub it in your face, you see. Just to say, oh, we killed the pagans, all in the witches, in the witch hunts. So all oh, they're naughty and they don't believe in Jesus. So we killed the bunch. They're witches, but this is not witchcraft. See, what they've done, what I'm uh, intending to do in this presentation is to put the sun into perspective and bring back some honour to the science of light. Because these people have trashed it. This is McDonald's, Ampol, <laughs> Shell, Starbucks. That's, that's all this is. It's corporate crap. They're just offering services that we don't need. Interlopers. As if we can't be priests and kings ourselves. And we need these killers because they do kill even though good people go to churches oh yes oh, I've got relatives my cousin Robert he's still going around doing a regular pioneer That's, I, I did that for four years <laughs> knock knock oh you've got to come to Jehovah if you want to be saved and my cousin's there just knocking and he's, he's got so many health problems and he's, but he's out there witnessing 10 hours a day trying to save people to one of these corporate fictions. <clears throat> so, but they're trashing the name of light. Oh yeah, sure, they'll have it in their symbols. Uh -huh. And here the Vatican, when I got to Rome and did two days of syncretism after four days of syncretism in Florence, I met my sovereign friends here, Matteo, um, Marco, uh, about a bunch, about 20 of us. And we met here and I said, let's walk up to St. Peter's Square and I'll show you, we'll do a 10 minute astrotheology lesson. First of all, we see in front of St. Peter, on top of St. Peter's Square, you see 13 statues and in the middle you see Jesus Christ, the shepherd, the good shepherd with a cross. And he's got six over here and six over there. And that's the sun with the 12 signs of the zodiac. And you see 12 pillars below. 12. There's always 12 or 13, 12 or 13, it's a theme. And then we, we're up here, this is a bit elevated here, so we could look down at the obelisk. And the obelisk is the sundial which makes these patterns, like the Union Jack, which by the way, someone told me here, a couple of people have confirmed that the Union Jack comes from Somerton in Glastonbury, Somerset, which Somerton is at the tail of Leo the Lion of Judah, or the line of the Zodiac Leo. Somerton is Leo in Glastonbury Zodiac. That's where summer happens in Leo the line. So of course you have Somerton in Leo. But that's where the Union Jack comes from. From Somerton. I, I don't know, I might be wrong, but the, 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 the person who said that is uh, you know, trustworthy and uh, pretty reliable, but might want to just double check that. But that, if that's so, you can understand the Union Jack, as I've suggested, Jack is Jacob. Jacob is Bacchus. Bacchus is the sun. And the union of, of Jack is this equinoctial line. Because at March the 21st, this is where the sun rises in the east. That road there, 
goes all the way up, and that's called la via della conciliazione, the reconciling. Equinox, every year. That's what the via from the Master 21st, Pope looks out, and there's the obelisk in front of him, and there's Master Easter, and he sees sun rising right in the middle of the via della conciliazione, reconciling. Yeah, the equinox. So, and when you start from here, this is facing east, Master 21st, this is June the 21st, summer solstice, and the sun will cast a shadow onto here, this statue at the end of the colonnade, these beautiful big colonnades. And this statue on top of the colonnade gets a shadow. And at night, that one night every year, it casts a shadow over in this direction. That's the winter solstice of Cancer. Aries, Cancer, along the way. The secret of creation is in the way, and they're rubbing it in your face. Then after that, the sun falls down again to Libra. Libra judges the sun again, just as Aries does. Aries is Krios, the judge, criticize, critique. Krios in the Greek system, judging between middle, the land of God, the judge, the scales of justice, Libra, balancing, September the 21st, equinox, then it falls down to Capricorn, Tropic of Capricorn, and the same thing again, shadow, shadow, and here you've got Chris Cross, this is the Ki, this is the Ro in Greek, Kiro Christo, crystal. Krista, Krishna, Kronos, they all do it. That's, a, that's the story of creation. That's the vibration. It's telling you about the vibration in a bigger scale, in a bigger fractal, so we can go, hmm, of course it's got to be a fractal of the way. <clears throat> and so, um, oh look, there's a lot more there I can talk about, but we need to press on. I can see I'm running out of time. How much time we got, uh, please? 45 more minutes. Oh, I thought it would be speaking longer. Lovely. Um, so you see, here you'll see um, uh, the 12 petals of the sun always facing east. These two pillars are the pillars of Boaz and Jacob. King Solomon's temple was built like that. Solomon is the sun, Amun is the sun, Om is the sun. So that's the temple of the sun, the temple of Solomon. It's all the sun. There's more sun. This is an obelisk. This is a sundial. What else could it be? Here's the eight spoke, the eight petals, because of the eight spoke wheel, the cardinal cross and the fixed cross. But this is this is a monument to the sun. Well, if the sun, there's the year. Year comes from yes. Comes from yeah, year. Of course, the year is run by the sun, so it's yes, the sun. And the day, day is this God. So, of course, the day is in reference to God, and the year is in reference to God, the God of light. And there it is, in monuments, beautiful masonry that men spend years to design and, and place in their right place and to get energy from, sometimes negatively, sometimes positively. But these are transformers of energy, of magnetic energy. And the sun and magnetism, it's always magnetism and electricity. Basilica, San Maria degli Agnelli, Agnelli, Angeli, sorry, <coughs> dei Martiri, Rome. There's the 24 hours along the ecliptic and the zodiac signs. There they are, around 12 or 8, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo. Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces. There is this, the sun. All of that is all, all about the sun, all of it. Even the, when you see the, the Mason and the Sonic black and white, that's because you have black light at night, white light in the evening, positive and negative, everywhere you go. It's a dance, dance of duality. There we have 16 petals. That's the uh, throat chakra. 12 petals is the heart chakra. Of course the heart chakra of Leo ruled by the sun can have 12 apostles. 12 posts. Or disciples, take your pick. The, the posts, 
That's what they were known in astrology. They're called posts. There's 12. There is 24. The 24 elders around the throne of God. But it's always the sun. And of course, these are the degrees. These will be either degrees or beacons, or, or there will be 360 of these. You can go around and count them, it will always be a number that is a harmonic of the ecliptic, something to do with the ecliptic, always. It will be 72, 108, uh, 2160, it will be 153, 144,000, 12, 40, 7, all numbers to do with life. You know, it's not like, oh, we're going to start monotheism. 12. Judges, there's 12 pillars. Yeah, let's do everything in 12. Yeah, for no other reason than we love 12. What? The Bible's full of 12. What for? <laughs> yeah. And they don't get it, and they go to church. Oh, Jesus walked along the ecliptic of Galilee, the circuit of Galilee, with you know, 12 disciples. Oh, and they go there, and they have bus tours. And this is when Jesus did this and Jesus. This does not exclude a historical Jesus, by the way. Because there were many, many. <laughs> It doesn't exclude if you, you know that some people want to have a you know a role model. There may have been and there will have been Christs and Buddhas and Jesuses. In fact, that's what the uh, Egyptian system churned out. Jesuses. So did the um, the Therapeutae and the Sini temples in the deserts of uh, the Gnostics of Judah. That's why Titus had to destroy the temple there because they were churning out Jesus. Yeah, because when you do your 33 levels of ordeals in masonry, the last level is crucifixion. Physical, real. It's an ordeal that must be passed in those systems. Because they were selecting the best of the best, the most noble of aristocratic hearts on this planet to lead the way. And so they had to go through 33 ordeals. And the last ordeal up, you bring your cross in masonry up to the... And then <clears throat> you're crucified and you survive this. Of course you survive it. You get a new name, and that name is ultimately Jesus. It's always Jesus. In syncretism, it has always been because Jesus is you, Jesus, the hero that is always coming on your ecliptic. Booties. Ah, there's Booties with his side in Virgo. Ah, the hero. Hercules. You, the Yule log. The Yule is the wheel. So we're always, it's always you is coming, because it's the you. And Jesus is on the wheel. He's Orion. He's a Fucus. He's Cephas. Take your pick. <laughs> there's only, there's, there's, in the end, it's ultimate, ultimately it's you, you and I. So here you see, this is all, this, there'll be 360 of these, or there'll be 153, or there'll be... You know, everywhere we went in Ecuador, we counted 12, 24, 4, the same numbers turn up. There it is. Cathedrals. Always two pillars. The pillars, this is Pisces. This is the feet of Pisces. To the back is the Holy of Holies, the head. Let's do that, shall we? Because I explained this to Maria and um, when we went to Salisbury. And I pointed out that all cathedrals <coughs> are in this shape. See? Next year when we make more money, we're going to get better blackboards. <laughs> Promise. Whiteboards. Huh. Like this, you see, of course, the Holy of Holies is here. That's Aries. And you see Boas and Jackson is here. And you enter here. And these are the pews for all the people in the outer courtyard. And then you've got the ones that pay more because they're next to the altar, which is, in Arabic, Taurus. Altar is the altar where you alter your consciousness. That's why you have to get there to have your... That's what Maria was saying yesterday. When, <coughs> And I said, I've, all, I've, I've been explaining that in the Temple of Solomon, you get to the cerebellum, Taurus, Altor, <clears throat> and the altar. And you see, remember, um, the high priest Aaron, he uh, officiated with, with seven candles at the altar of God. Well, that's the Pleiades in Taurus. The Pleiades, the seven candles, are in Taurus. 
Aaron is associated with the bull. He made the golden calf in Taurus. He is the high priest in Taurus, altar, the altar, where we must ascend. You see, the ones that get closer to there, they're more, that's why these guys pay a lot more. Right? You've seen that? Yeah. Uh, okay. Anyway, so it's it's all in syncretism. It's all on the ecliptic. And these are monuments, endless, even modern ones. They show the sun with its wings, just like Quetzalcoatl. This is Quetzalcoatl worship. They don't know it. Oh, Jesus is coming to save us. <laughs> yeah? And it's Quetzalcoatl. It's Virakosha. It's Krishna. And yet they'll kill you for saying, Oh, Krishna is the devil. <clears throat> There's the spire, the phallic of the sun, the sun bar. Domes is the sun. It's all the sun. The cross, the cup, the Holy Grail, the Deacon of Leo, the Christ, Regulus, the Lion, the cup, the scepter shall not depart from the light. Of course, because the Deacon of Leo is the, the Holy Grail, the cup, which we get intoxicated, according to Macrobius, when we come from the Tropic of Cancer and we go down through Leo and drink too much of that cup and then we go down to Capricorn. That's the Holy Grail. It's right here in Leo, the cup. Crater. Yes. I E S in Greek. Yes. Jesus. The sun. Fire. Or the sun. S U N. 24 hours. These, these are monuments. Salisbury. Anyone you go to see, it's a monument to the sun. <laughs> to light. God is light. This is true God worship. Not what, this, what these ones down here say. Not what the, the dude with the funny garb. <laughs> He's got no idea, no idea what God is, no idea. He's a left brain. We noticed, we did a tour, we went through uh, Worcester Cathedral. Worcester Cathedral is beautiful. And uh, I noticed the priests walking around and the ladies there in the church, very uh, ecclesiastical and they're very intellectual. Jesus Christ is... Uh, and, they, and they're so intellectual. Well, what's, what's that got to do with anything about Christianity? Oh, Christianity is just... Love, the science of love, intellectual, it's, it's messy, you know, it's, it's thinking. Oh, when I think of Jesus, must have been the countless <laughs> arguments that Jehovah's Witnesses have amongst them. This is why you get factions. How many Baptists are there? There's the, the Northern Baptist 1983 Council of Ecumenical Blah 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 Corporation. There's the Southern Baptist of Blah Blah. There's a Probably about 40,000 of them Baptists. And it's a joke. It's just, it's just noisy. Oh, here's James Swagger giving me a call. <laughs> yeah. We're supposed to have a radio interview. <laughs> so I'm going to Ireland to catch up with you. But um, there you go. Look, four pillars. This is, this is the four cardinal points. The four directions. This is light. This is a monument to light. The sun across Jesus going around the four horsemen of the, the apocalypse. The unveiling. The apocalypse is the unveiling. It's all based on, it's all based on the oracles of um, the uh, Sibylline Roman oracles anyway. Tony Bushby has exposed that. Revelation, the book of Revelation, comes from the Sibylines. Straight out, ripped straight out of it because it's gospel writing. Of course, there's thousands of gospels. Goat songs. Ragudia. It's, there's songs, you know, they're, they're, they're literary words for all those people who go looking for a literal Jesus, you know. And yes, we've got to kill people for that Jesus. And he didn't even say to kill people, he said, Go and bless people, love your enemies. God damn, you know, love them, give them your land, don't come and steal it off them. You see, they're, they're so confused, this lot. And they're just a bunch of because the people who. The Rothschilds and the Rockefellers who fund them and the Vatican that fund the Jehovah's Witnesses and everybody else are just a coven of witches of the dark side. And they're controlled by the dark satellite, which is the animalistic orb chakra of the earth. But that's being rectified. And I've dealt with that in many other presentations, so I won't go into it. They are being controlled by some evil celestial forces. And that's just animal forces, undeveloped good. That's all it is. 
some mini Arthur, we were going to go, I uh, did four days of syncretism in Florence and uh, we were going to go and see this, but we didn't get time because we were too uh, comfortable and lazy at the villa. We had a beautiful villa at Francesca, Francesca's house there in uh, Tuscany and uh, from my third story villa room, oh man, I dreamt of these things all my life and they came true, I could see the dung. So I'm just looking out the bedroom and there's the dome. <laughs> anyway, um, Francesca actually recounted me how much trouble she has had from the Freemasonic fraternities in Florence. Apparently they're the most powerful in all of the world. Banking started there. And in the hills of Florence, oh boy, there's some nasty types. And they control, they have a lot of say in control in this country too, you know, through the corporations. Their corporations, the Windsor and the Rothschild corporations. Rest assured, it all goes back to those families in Rome, Pisa, Florence, and Venice of the black nobility. And um, <clears throat> Francesca, who was going to take me here, she recounted to me how much trouble they've given her in death threats and uh, what she's had to do to the one of the most four, four uh, front people in the sovereignty movement in Italy. And uh, she has suffered for uh, at least 12 years now. <clears throat> Her mother and father were very, very, very important people in Rome. The mother was a um, midwife to all of these, the bloodlines, children. She was a head of the, the most powerful hospital in Rome. And the father was a great, great doctor. So she comes from this great Roman, and they moved to Florence about uh, 50 years ago, a long time ago. And um, so they, they keep track of that because they don't want this beautiful science and people teaching it uh, and sovereignty. Here we have Jesus Christ in the heavens. Of course he's in the heavens. It's the sun. I am the light of the world. The, the risen saviour. It rises every day. There's the four points. The four fixed signs of the zodiac. The four horsemen of the apocalypse. There's the 12 signs in San Miniato of the Zodiac. There's Scorpio in the plain sight. Virgo. There's the four again. The lion, the man, the eagle, and the bull will be there somewhere. There's the sun, Christ Jesus, the four crosses, the cardinal cross. He's always pointing to the heart because Leo is Regulus, is the Messiah, is the Christ, is the doorway, the heart. Plus it's telling you that the sun, S-U-N, S-O-N, rules from this point. This is the soul, soul invictus, S-O-L, soul, for the sun is soul, S-O-U-L, same thing. It does actually represent the soul in man, soul moon. There they are, the zodiacs in temples all around the world. The ecliptic is so much adored. This science was known. It's the blueprint of how the universe thinks, how it gets things done. Everywhere is the zodiac. There's a 24-hour one divided into two weeks. This is what the Chinese do. They have two-week moons. There's the yin and yang, 28. Uh, 36 deacons of the Japanese, uh, the uh, Chinese. There is the, the light of the, <clears throat> the tree of life within the body. The beast in Revelation with seven heads and ten horns. There's seven levels here of the Kabbalistic tree that correspond with the chakras. Down the bottom, bottom Malkuth, which is the same as Ketha. Ketha is ether. Here is the Christ in the heart, Tifereth. Here you have feminine wisdom, uh, understanding, and masculine wisdom. Here you have the eleventh Sudaroth, uh, uh, Sephiroth which is Da'at. Da'at is Gnosis, knowledge. It's the secret door to get to understanding, to wisdom, to knowledge, or rather to uh, the ether, put it that way, and just causal, unconditioned consciousness. But that's the doorway. It's implied. It's the eleven. It's called pseudo sephiroth because it's implied. But one needs to find that door. That's the door where Jesus said, Woe to you who have thrown, thrown away the keys of knowledge and you have um, 
you have um, stumbled the little ones. There is the sun being adored, always candles, light, or the cross and the sun. There is the sun walking on water. There is the cross. It's light, light crosses because it's waves. It has to cross. The waves have to cross each other to interfere with other waves. And the wave also interferes on itself. And um, collapses itself. And so it, it's, it's all a vibration, a positive and a negative, and a zero point in the middle. This is what the pyramid is all about. The chief cornerstone. Blessed are your eyes, for they see. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see, and have not seen it. That's what you're seeing with this eye. It's not what you see with the physical eyes. Allegory of the sun. So, the allegory of the sun is that the sun goes along the ecliptic. And one is recounting the story of the sun. You see, for the farmer, when the sun is in Aries, it's the springtime, the blossom of the land. Then when Taurus comes, the bull reminds him to take out his bull and plough, and so, And then Gemini shows the farmer that things are doubling, reproducing, twin ca uh, kids, twin lambs everywhere in the springtime. Cancer is the summer backward moving, sideways walking animal, but when the sun reaches the top, on the 26th of June, it must walk sideways. Then Leo is the roaring ruler of the jungle, summer. The roar of the lion, the roaring dog days of July. Because the sun is conjunct Sirius, the dog. So you don't have dog days. Uh, then, then Virgo comes and she's the, the one, the handmaiden of the Lord who holds out the sheaf of grain. Because when the sun passes through her sign, she gives grain. Yeah and harvest. <clears throat> it's all along the ecliptic. There is the saviour. Life depends from the energy of the sun. It's the saviour. <coughs> the sun dies every evening through the doorway of Delilah Virgo into the scales of Libra to be judged. That's judgment day there. It's born again every morning as it comes out from the other side. Horus arising Sun setting, being swallowed up by set. There's the three stages of the sun. Sun, newborn sun, sun most high, and the dying setting sun. Sun walks on water. Of course it does. Fire in the sky, water down below. It's always been that way. <clears throat> the sun dies on the cross and is dead for three days before he's born again. At the winter solstice of 21st, it doesn't move for three days. It dies. And then on the 25th of December, it begins its climb. It's reborn. Deus Invictus Solis Natis was the name, original name of Christmas, the day of the invincible sun. Because even though it dies on the 21st, it sure does win again and conquer in the Lamb of God when he exalts or gets resurrected at Easter. Hmm. There's the Lamb of God. The new birth, the new life, every year. Every year it starts again. Cyclical. Walter Russell said, if we only think of everything cyclically, we will, un we will understand unity consciousness. Unity consciousness. If we understand these cycles, nature is cyclical. If we can think cyclically, we can unite our thinking. There's Leo. Regulus is on the ecliptic. This is the strongest month of the year, the strongest animal on the, uh, the, the roar of the lion, the, the, the power. Uh, the sun then passes through Virgo and gives her um, bread. Bethlehem is Virgo, the house of bread. So you get wine and grain. And what do you get? Bread and wine. Jesus gives us the bread and the wine. And the oil. Oil is Christos. So everywhere you go, for instance, in Italy, everywhere I went, there was vineyards, 
olives, and wheat. So it's the land of Christ. Because Bacchus, the god of wine, Jesus, the god of bread, I am the bread of life. He who eats me shall not ever go hungry. He who drinks my blood. See, this was known in Egypt as the blood of the gods. What a beautiful thing that you can watch the grapes grow, then you just cultivate them, you put them in the vat, you squeeze them, you look after them, you put them in the cool, you wait till they mature, then you take out your bottle of wine in winter, and you drink them in the blood of Christ. So you shall not die. <clears throat> uh, and these, these are the most perfect symbols of the yearly trajectory of the sun through the ecliptic. Um, because bread, bread also is cultivated. You don't just, you know, scoop some grain and then just turn it into bread, right? There's a lot, a lot of stuff to do in between until you can take that fresh bread out of the oven and then you can celebrate the whole year of toil. You have fresh bread. And grace to who? Jesus. Yes, it's the sun. Because if you didn't turn up every day, you wouldn't be eating bread. So you must eat my body and drink my wine, my blood. Here is where Libra will always be. Libra will always be here. This will be Capricorn, this will be Cancer, the other side will always be Aries. The judges are here. This is the spiritual axis and this is the physical. The priest and the king that we are. The cross that we are on is priestly and kingly. And this is why the controllers have taken that away from us taken our kingship, we're not sovereign anymore, we've got rights, privileges and services, no rights, benefits, when we register and subscribe, subscribe. therefore, you know, they, uh, <clears throat> they've taken our good work from us and given us jobs instead, but the good work is to do this work, <laughs> to, um, to do the work of the king and the priest. Scorpio, when the sun passes through Scorpio, it gets bitten like Judas Iscariot by the backbiter. Because that's what Scorpio, the scorpion bites from the back. That's why Judas Iscariot and the constellation of Scorpio looks like a J. It's a J. You look at it, it's the second brightest constellation in the sky. It sticks out. Scorpio is just magnificent. It's a J. It's the Yod of Yod He Bahe, Jehovah. All the fixed signs of the zodiac on the ecliptic spell out the name of Jehovah. Scorpio, Aquarius, Taurus, and Leo. Jehovah, Yod He Bah He. The tenth card of the uh, Rider Waite tarot card, the Wheel of Fortune, will reveal that to you. Just have a look at it and meditate on that one for five minutes and you'll see it. And so this is Isis. The glyph for, um, the glyph for Scorpio is an M, Mary, Isis. There's Sagittarius, and it pierces the sun as it comes to die on the 21st of um, December on the ecliptic. The sun's rays appearing as a crown of thorns. That's the corona of the sun doing that. Of course it is the corona of Jesus, the crown of thorns. As depicted in all the artwork. There's only one, there's only one topic. Any gospel you write, any song, it's all, it'll be one, one topic. It'll be light. It's all about light. And the sun is the chief light equals God. Logi equals word, the word of God. Psalms 19, 4, 6. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. That would be the ecliptic, the belt of Aphrodite, the blazing path, which is 17 degrees wide of the zodiac. <coughs> which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoicing. See, it's Prince Charming and Cinderella. It's Perseus, it's Prometheus. In the morning he comes and he just... All the stars just disappear. He's the only light. He's not going to share his glory with no stars. <laughs> no Venus, you it doesn't matter if it's Jupiter, you don't care. When he comes up, all the constellations flee. That's Perseus in the Aries slaying Medusa, the starlit night. 
And here it's described as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. He is going forth from one end of the heaven, yet yeah, he rises to the other end of the heaven. And his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. They're describing God here, the sun on the ecliptic. And this is what they read in church down at the cathedral every Sunday. And they're waiting for vicarious salvation, salvation chief ponzi scheme of all time, Jesus Christ to come and save them. Well, he's coming. In the meantime, there's Satan, isn't there? And his demons. And we've got to fight against them. But Jesus is coming to save us. <clears throat> First Corinthians 15:41. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. Oh boy, they're going to eat those words the church girls when they read that on Sunday. When they realise that it's all astrotheology, astrology, which is from the devil, and alchemy, and all of those good things which they have been denying. It's the Antichrist. Churchianity is the Antichrist. They are against this consciousness. They have wars on terrorism. Crusades. I've shown that you go to court and you get represented by a bar member, you are actually playing with the devil. They are foreign agents. They've got unclean hands. They are using your name without any authority in court. Neither have you got any authority to use your name. That is registered with, with the Crown. And they are the only owners of that name. So both parties are committing fraud in those courtrooms. These are... These are <coughs> Men of darkness, and um, this is, you know, they're going to eat their words one day because here they are condemning astrology and natural law, and uh, here is here is the Bible talking astrology right there. That's pure astrology, undeniable. His power is from the rising of the sun until the going down thereof. God's power is only good during the day is what this is saying. God's power ends at sundown, according to this scripture. Job 38, 32. Canst thou bring forth Maseroth in his season? Yeah. Maseroth, would that mean zodiac? Hmm. I wonder why they didn't translate that word and they translated all the others from Hebrew <coughs> into uh, English. <laughs> Probably be handy for them not to read, put the, the true word translated, which can only be zodiac in there. But every Christian... Bible has got Maseroth in there. Nice when they revert to words that will hide and blur out the true meanings of things, you see. But the Jehovah's Witnesses have it in Job 38, 32. I remember a Christian type, mm, hallelujah, Jesus is going to save me. I was street performing in the Burke Street Mall where I always perform. And uh, this happy type uh, bought a CD off me and, um, and then he started talking about um, the Bible, and, and I said, yeah, well, it's interesting how it's all based on the Zodiac and Maseroth. He goes, oh, no, no, I don't do any of that. That's, that's from the devil. I'm a Christian. I don't get into that stuff. I said, oh, yeah, okay. Mm. Well, it's fun, funny how Job 38, 32 says that um, God is challenging mankind, saying, can you tell the Maseroth, you idiot? Because if you don't, you're just an idiot. How dare you not know the stars and, and the times and seasons? How dare you... You know, deny this science. Can you know the Maseroth and its season and its coming? Do you know when Scorpio is around the corner? Do you know when one of the saviours that I put on the ecliptic is coming to save you? So God is challenging them. And I said that to him. I said, just check it out. And he goes, all right, I'll look at my concordance. Pull that stone. I said, look at Maseroth. Maseroth, the Zodiac. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. All right, see ya. And off they go. Who knows? Or maybe I planted a seed. Maybe he'll get scared of that word Maseroth and probably tear that page out of his Bible or something like that. They're that crazy. They kill you if you don't believe what they believe. Uh, <clears throat> Malachi 4.2 The Son of Righteousness is coming with healing in its wings. It doesn't say S-O-N either. Because the Christians will tell you, oh, that's Jesus. He heals you. Yeah, because healing comes from Helios which is the name of the sun. Of course, Helios is going to have healing in his wings. Quetzalcoatl. The Egyptians always displayed the sun disc with wings. <clears throat> the sun of righteousness. 
with healing in its wings. Revelation 22, 16, I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright morning star. It's the sun. This then, John, 1 John 1, 5, this then is the message which we have five minutes, I thought so. Um, <laughs> sorry there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, dang. Okay. Uh, I'll finish off with this then. John 4, 8, he that, no, uh, 1 John 1, 5, this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. John 4, 8, it's all talking about light and sun. It's not talking about no Jesus in history. And so I say to people, look, if you want the historical Jesus, that's good. The Gospels, they are songs. They tell you that. It doesn't say this is the history of exactly what Jesus did, a historical person. It says clearly that these are Christian, Greek Gospels, Tragudis. And there's many more thousands of these Gospels. There's thousands of them. This is a beauty. Psalms 48, 11. For the Lord God is a sun. And then it continues and says, and a shield. And that shield is the, mag is the negative... Um, <laughs> that's twice now. Um, the <laughs> I'm resurrected. No, it's just a squad. Yeah, sun worship. Yes, there you go. All right, three more scriptures. Uh, Hebrews twelve twenty nine. For our God is a consuming fire. Judges five, thirty one. So may all your enemies perish, Lord, but may all who love you be like the sun when it rises in its strength. Luke twelve forty nine. I have come to bring fire on the earth. Ephesians five fourteen. Wake up, sleeper, arise from the dead. And Christ will shine on you. We're going to close off here, but I'm halfway through this presentation, folks, and I'm going to continue. This is what I've got. All oh, whatever anyone ever said about the sun in history, and you really don't want to miss it tomorrow. This is uh, just to give you an idea. Jesus was Caesar by Francesco Carrotta. Okay, we're going to look at there's many proofs that JC was JC. Oops. Was that the guy who died on the Ides of March? I mean, uh, Nisan 14, same day. Julius Caesar and Jesus Christ. The calendar which began when those two dudes walked the earth. The Julio Gregorian calendar. We're going to bust a biggie tomorrow, okay? This is the sun, okay? The presentation of the sun, part two, tomorrow. Uh, I have to say my gratitude to Santos, as I said, he's touring for like five hours tomorrow as well, so, and he could do double, so, um, 